This call is this. being recorded. And Richie, if you want to start with any opening statement, otherwise we can open it up to questions. No, nope, I'm good. Let's just take some questions. I'm, I'm good to go from there. Awesome. Anyone that wants to go first can go ahead. Okay, so you can go ahead. That's fine. Hello, either either Sean or Jason want to ask a question? Um, yeah, I guess I'll go first. So, Ricky, uh, thoughts on the season ahead and your first match against uh, North Carolina this weekend? Um, just looking forward to getting out the gate to get going. You know, it's mm. been a very, very long preseason. It's been um, difficult for us to manage. It's been a huge challenge with, uh, with the amount of time that we've had to periodize you know, physical development, tactical development, um, restrictions on the number of matches we can play. There we go. Then circumstances of, of games, you know, it, it's uh, it's been tough. So we're just happy to be getting out at the gate and, and it's it's not ideal. We'd, we'd rather we were in a situation where we had our, you know, impactful players, the five internationals that are off on duty, you know, don't make it easy when you've, you've spent time on the training ground trying to get, you know, your product to a certain point and, and your top players are sort of taken away. So, and I, you know, I'm not the only one who's got that same issue. I'm sure all the other coaches around the league are saying the same thing. But it is what it is. We're happy to get started. We're going to use the first, you know, four matches out the gate to, to you know, learn on the fly. You use the games to grow a little bit tactically, grow a little bit organizationally and, and see where we go from there. Thank you, Richie. You're welcome. Uh, hi, Richie. It's uh, Jason. How are you doing? Hey, Jason. How are you, mate? Uh, good. I, I raced home from getting my uh, second shot, so I'm I'm kind of on top of the world right now. Um, well, I hope you're okay, because a lot of people have got those second shots and started to get a little bit a little bit sick. So I hope it doesn't happen to you, mate. I hope you're okay. So far, I mean, I'm only like like an hour and a half uh, from the needle in the arm, so right now I'm fine. Uh, so good fingers, timing. Fingers crossed, Doc. Fingers crossed that uh, continues then, mate. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, I wanted to ask, um, I was having some audio difficulties here, so I didn't hear the first half of your answer. So I am I think it's about so something about these um, uh, replacement players that you've had to bring in. Um, to what degree are those players possibly uh, on trial? I mean, I know anytime you get a deal like this, it's kind of a trial, but how much are you – perhaps considering them for more than just the next few weeks? Um, what a great question. Yeah, yeah. Anytime a player comes into your football club, you know, it, it, it's a tough tag to carry, right? Replacement player. Mm. Um, so, you know, we've, we've had the mindset that, look, we're not just bringing in players to replace. We're bringing in players. You wouldn't bring them in if they didn't have the potential to help you or the potential to, to contribute. So, yeah, we, we've brought in three players that, you know, we're hoping can be can prove to be good enough to stick around, um, and and you know they'll have an opportunity while our internationals are gone to to stake a you know a claim for a contract, and and that's the whole idea in bringing these players in. If they are, you know, proved to be better than what we've got currently under contract, or proved to be worthy of of adding to our roster, then you know we potentially would sign them. Um, but, you know, at, at this stage, you, you, we're still looking at our roster in, in an assessment capacity, still assessing everything. And, and the injuries and the, and the problems that we've encountered during this really long preseason uh, are making, you know, giving us food for thought, that's for sure. You know, uh, speaking of that, the, the injuries, you had to make the subs in the, the Sky Blue game. Uh, then on top of that, you're missing so many internationals. Um, I'm sure there's a, a positive way to look at it as such a big test going in against no disrespect. Oh, my phone is ringing. Sorry about that. Um, no, no disrespect to the other teams in the league, but going up against North Carolina on the road straight away. Um, is that kind of the, the, maybe the best test you could ask for with the style you want to play against a team that presses like they do? Absolutely. hundred percent, Jason, hundred percent, you know, and, Again, say what you like about all the rest of the teams in the league. Paul Riley does a fantastic job. You know, he's, he's, a, he's, 
he's my closest friend in the league and someone who, you know, reached out the minute I started with the, with this football club in this league and has been great ever since. And, you know, he does a great job. His teams are always super fit. His teams are, um, you know, always well organized and they do like to press from the front. So, yeah, if we're going to adopt a little bit of a, of, a, of a new tactical plan and a new idea of how we want to play, then this, we couldn't have asked for a better challenge. Going down there into, into a place that's very hard to, to get, get points out of and win. Uh, yeah, for, for some of our young players who are going to get their first sniff at NWSL play and first sniff of a, of a team like Carolina who just goes straight for the jugular, yeah, it's absolutely a great test for them. And, uh, you know, mentioning those those young players um, with the spots in the starting 11 that maybe wouldn't be necessarily open uh, with everyone in, in the fold. Um, who are you looking to? Who are you saying? I mean, obviously, everyone that gets in is uh, under the spotlight. But who are you maybe highlighting as uh, a real key, given the players that you're missing? You know, Trinity Rodman continues to develop incredibly so. She, she's going to feature in the match this weekend. And, you know, it'd be crazy of us not to give her some match minutes because, you know, she came on in Sky Blue when, when Bailey Feist got injured and just added a little dimension. Um, and she's got that capacity. And, and she's hungry to grow, hungry to get better, hungry to, to make little improvements to a game and, and learn, you know, about the professional game, what is what is required to endure and, and sustain a career at a professional level, which is great to see for a young player. So she, she'll definitely participate this weekend. Um, Anna Helfery, you know, our second on draft pick, she's also uh, proven to be quite resilient and, and, and quite switched on. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we'll see how those two go in particular. Um, Ashley Sanchez has been fantastic right throughout preseason and looks like she's really hungry, really up for it. Um, and Julia Rodder, who we acquired from Sweden, um, has nursed herself to a little bit of an adductor strain, a little bit of a, a problem with, with you know, the, the coming into our environment right off a, an off-season or a closed season in Sweden. So she's going to play quite a bit this weekend. I'm interested to see how she does in a new role. So there's a lot of you know, a lot of things that are going to be interesting for us to see. And again, like I said before, Jason, we're really in an assessment phase for a lot of our players and, and, and a lot of players who are in a contract with this football club to see where we can take their game and how they can help us this season moving forward. Thanks. I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let someone else uh, get a few in here. Okay. Anyone else Maybe have not. questions? Or do we want to go back to Jason if Jason has any more? I, I can't ask more uh, if, if no one's got any. I just don't want to do like five in a row and everyone else is like, when's this guy going to shut up? <laughs> I got a question uh, for Richie. Yep. What yep. area do you find – this is Sean, Sean Maslin from Honeyball Soccer. Um, what area yep. – in particular, do you see the possibility for the greatest amount of growth within your side this season? Oh, what a, what a, what a great question, Sean. That, 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 uh, look, you know, it's the final third for us, which has been an issue since I came to the football club. We, we build out the back fairly well. We go through midfield fairly well. We retain the ball fairly well. Everybody's comfortable on it. We get the majority of passes. We're, we're more often than not in the ascendancy when it comes to possession statistics. Uh, we just need to be a little bit more cutthroat in the final end, in, in, in that red zone where it's a, it's a finish or it's a, it's a quality pass or it's a really sharp interchange to give us the chances. There are things that we've, we've really focused on and, and trying to hone in on as we move into, into the early part of the season. If we get that piece right, then we'll be a very difficult outfit to deal with because we do have quality in a lot of different areas. Uh, it, we just we just would like to be a little bit more prolific in front of goal. That's the area for us. Richie. Yeah. Uh, I I guess I can go. Uh, I I get I got my one more. Um, you mentioned <laughs> uh, Richie. You mentioned uh, Julia Radar, and I know. It was such a frustrating thing with, you know, you get the deal signed. She's waiting to come from Sweden. She can't get here. Um, she finally got here. I know, you know, 
you scout a player really well when they play abroad. I know she played with Emily Sonnet, so you can talk to her as well about who Rodar is as a player. But now that she's actually in camp training with you, getting to talk about where she's best on the field with you and, and you get to watch her play, uh, what have you maybe learned about her game that might not have been readily apparent from just watching uh, on tape? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, it's not much. She she's she's came as build. Mm-hmm. Had a really interesting conversation with the uh, Swedish national team coach, and you know whether she was going to come into this camp to play against the U.S. or or whether she would be better served, you know, having just arrived, you know, 14 days prior to the game, and to stay with us and, and nurse this injury and get herself, you know, into some match playing and build rather than go over and you know two international flights again you know, COVID restrictions and quarantine and set the back a little bit. But he and I, Peter and I, had the same conversation. Where do you think she's best at? Where's her best role? And the truth is, she's just a good all-round footballer. She can play four or five different positions. Whether she plays a fullback, both right and left. She can even play at centre-back. She can play in a back three. She can play as a defensive midfielder, you know, in a, in a normal three. So, you know, she, she's got a lot of a lot of qualities. She's just a good all round intelligent footballer. Um, so we're, we're still investigating what will be her best role. And, and in these investigations or assessments, you, you look for relationships. Who's she got a good relationship with? Who, do, who, who would be a good blend, you know, a good partnership? So that's still evolving for, for a lot of players on the team because it's been, you know, such a, a, a difficult preseason to, to get all these things done. Uh, Thinking back, um, you mentioned uh, that Sanchez is, is looking hungry. And I know, you know, from being in the stadium for that, the game against Sky Blue, that fall she took, the the fact that she had to be stretchered off, it looked pretty scary. But then she kind of, she was walking around afterwards. Do you have an injury update on what happened there and, and how she's doing? Yeah, I think she had, a, you know, McCall Zaboni, you know, left, left stud marks right down from just below her rib cage. Mm-hmm. right down to, to just beneath the hip area. And it was okay. really, really pronounced. It went black and blue very quick. And, you know, it, it, look, it was a, it was a contest, contested ball from a corner, but she caught she caught uh, Ash really badly with her studs. And, um, you know, I spoke to, to the referee, Daniel Chesky, at the end of the game. She apologized and said, look, I, you know, that, that wasn't <laughs> – I should have done better with that one. And I said, it's football. You know, it, it wasn't – I don't think there was any malice in it. It's a, it's a strong physical challenge from a corner, but Ash really came off the, the, the worst and, and, and got the, <laughs> the wrong end of it. And, and it ended a day early when, when I just thought she was getting into a good groove in midfield as well. So, um, but look, Ash just wants to play football. She wants to get in the game, wants to play, wants to prove to, to people at the U.S. national team that the sniff that she got last year in camp shouldn't be the last time she gets looked at. And, and she's got a little bit of a point to prove, and I'm, and I'm 100% in a corner. I think that uh, that gets all of mine. Um, I think um, I'm actually uh, I got I think I've got a message from Emily Olson uh, that I can ask on her behalf. I think she she can't speak right now. She's in a recording studio. Um, okay. She is uh, curious about the replacement players uh, for the national team absences and the flow of the team as it is right now. Um, I know you, you kind of touched on that, but um, I guess how does that um, bringing these players in, does that disrupt very much or is it more of the players leaving is the disruption? You know, it's certainly the players leaving. That's the massive disruption. And it's very tough for these players coming in to sort of play catch up. You know, we, we had four weeks in the um, Washington Redskins bubble to try and get, uh, you know, a fitness base. And then three weeks in, in Florida to try and get, you know, some tactical developments and, and periodization done that way. And these players have been asked to come in at the desk and, and play catch up. It's very, very hard, you know, and, and I, you know, I don't care how good you are as a player. That, that's a big ask to come in and, 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 and have to you know, catch up to players who've had a real head start and, 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 and learn, you know, a tactical organization. And it's a tough one. So everything's a disruption. The players that are gone, the new players that are coming in. You know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of starting 
our season off in the middle of a FIFA window or FIFA international break. Craziness. But it is what it is. So now we're, we're forced to, to put a product on the field. It's a little bit unfair to all of the players. It's really unfair to all the coaches after you've spent an awful lot of time progressing your group with a view to using key players, you know, really impactful players, and now you don't get to use them. So that's the big disruption. And then, you, you know, you're asking players to now fill those void and, and, and perform at a, a higher level. And um, it's, it's not always – it's a bit of a recipe for the disaster. So we'll see how it goes this weekend. Um, I'm trying to be very optimistic and trying to be very supportive of our players. But we really are giving them a huge mammoth task to, to overcome one of the best teams, you know, perennial powerhouse in our league. Well, I think that that gets all mine. So uh, appreciate it, Richie. Thanks a lot. Tell uh, Jay, tell Emily from me. It would be nice to get a you know an in person question every now and again from her. I'm here, Richie. I just can't talk, so I don't. So it doesn't go over air. <laughs> so oh, I hear you. Um, that, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, I was just giving you a hard time in your absence. I apologize. <laughs> Didn't know you were there listening. I appreciate it. All right. All right, we can do about one or two more questions if anyone has any. Nope, all right. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I will send out the recording here in a few minutes and a transcription to follow. And make sure to catch us 3.30 on Saturday versus North Carolina. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Georgie. Thanks, Jordan. Uh,